On Spotlight today, we bring you singer, rapper, songwriter, and a lot more. Iceberg Slim left New York to Nigeria looking to write his name in gold. Do enjoy this one. While many know the name, Iceberg Slim, most are unaware of the story behind the man bearing the name. The New York-born Nigerian rapper, songwriter and entertainer has been on the music scene for quite some time. I went to school for criminal justice at a time in my life where I wanted to pursue, um, I wanted to be an FBI agent. Um, after completing there, I just decided I wanted to follow my passion, which was music. So I enrolled in audio engineering and production school where I graduated. Um, I later moved to Nigeria once I completed that program. Um, that's when my journey in this industry started. But going back, I actually started in a choir singing when I was around seven or eight years old. I joined the choir in my church. Um, I was playing instruments, playing the keyboard. I was playing the drums by the age of 12 in my church. With a degree in criminology, Iceberg says he ultimately had to follow his heart in his pursuit of music. Adding that while in school, he had been actively involved in music, performing at different gigs and shows that were available to him at the time. When I was studying criminology, when I was trying to be an FBI agent, I was still playing the instruments in church. I was still in the choir, still singing. Um, at that point, um, I was, I had a little home studio set up where I was creating my own music. And amongst like the Nigerian community and universities, they have African student associations. They actually used to book me for gigs and I would go there with my team, we would perform, you know, sometimes it would be after school, some, like it was, it was hectic, but it was fun because it was me following a passion, following something that I felt was for me, and I loved it. Ah. It's your boy, zone out, iceberg slim. Uh. Ha. Picture this, I'm one of the illest lyricists, but I don't get the credit I deserve, which is ridiculous. Articulate, meticulous, so tell me what the issue is. Maybe my intelligence has just become irrelevant. Maybe I should use words like bat and rat, and spit nursery rhymes like the cat in the hat. And maybe they will say, holy crap, he can rap and give me trophies and some plaques that say best rapper on the back. This is skill, how I think of lyrics so ill, how I can start with a little topic and it builds. Into on his journey into the Nigerian music industry, he credits rappers Source Kid and LDD Don for motivating his move down to Nigeria. Adding that LD specifically took him into his home and taught him the ropes of the Nigerian music scene. The first contact that I had was Source Kid. He was the one that actually influenced my decision to come to Nigeria. He had been telling me for years back when we were in the States that I should come, I should come, but I just felt I didn't really know anything about Nigeria apart from what I would hear people say or what I would see in movies. Um, and then when I decided to come, I reached out to LD and he said that, oh yeah, come, you know, I'll show you the ropes, you come stay in my house. So when I first came, I actually stayed in LD's house for a few months. Um, he showed me a few things. I went to a few meetings with him, met a few different artists through him. Iceberg Slim broke into the music scene with his hit track, Am I Better? Around that same time, I had released one song that was titled Am I Better? And it got a lot of attention, media publicity and everything like that because they said it was a diss track to Am I. So from that, I kind of had a leverage. They kind of knew who I was or they knew my name or they knew my music. So I felt like, okay, they like this rapper. Let me continue giving them rap. But little did I know, I now released another song, still rapping, and it didn't really quite enter. The song gave him the much needed media attention, but he had to do a lot more to sustain his spot in the music industry. Um, one of the first 
singles and videos that I released was Too Much Money featuring Banky W. It got a lot of publicity and a, a great response from the people because it was me being myself. And funny thing with that too was that was the second version I had recorded. The first version was very Yankee-ish and Banky had told me like, guy, if you're trying to push this song in Nigeria, you have to kind of, and he gave me different references to like Nato C, Kechuku, like their punchlines and things would be very relatable for an average Nigerian. So I actually had to switch up what I wrote and change it to two new verses. And that got like a lot of publicity in Nigeria. Like the video got great rotation. People loved the song. And, but because it was still kind of rap or hip hop, so to speak, at that time, it wasn't so socially accepted, I would say. I think, you know, the rappers that we know now in Nigeria that we accept weren't so much around at that time or weren't on the mainstream level. I'm throwing money like paper planes. So much money, you would drown if I make it rain. I got Shaq Ben the system, so I might dance. Look at the money in the air. Sky Bank. We in the club drinking champagne like Lucasade. If it ain't Rose, then it's Ace of Spades. He says he has now got the hang of how to effectively communicate with his audience in Nigeria, making his music more acceptable. One difference in my music from then and now is I've actually learned pigeon within this small time frame. I actually learned that and I was able to infuse that into my music, not 100%. But there's uh, a degree of it inside the music. So therefore, those that are not following the English as quickly and fluently, there's still a portion of pigeon for them to you know, understand. I've always understood Yoruba. My parents used to speak Yoruba to us. And we're going to a Yoruba church. So I always understood Yoruba, but I couldn't speak it fluently. I think I'm still learning. I can speak a little bit of it. Shawa. So, I mean, but it's been a, a, a fun journey. And if you a hater, don't you come my way. I put my city on another way. You ain't getting money, get away from me. And if you a hater, don't you come my way. I just want to hit it with the lights off. So I told the girl, just take your tights off. Weave, the new single, featuring David O. What inspired the song was just me trying to just have fun and be myself. We was in the studio, my manager just said, do something creative, do something different. Because normally if I enter a studio, the first thing I'm looking for is a tungba beat, a typical Naija sound. But he said, no, just do something different, just have fun. So I made the beat, we were there, I wrote, recorded, and that's how Wave came about. And then we said, okay, since it's a foreign sound, it's this Afro trap, let's bring it home a bit. So we kind of said, okay, who should we feature on this? And then we unanimously decided David O reached out to him. He was in Yankee at the time. I think two days after he got back to Nigeria, he came to the studio, recorded, and there we have it. <laughs> Get 